In this video, we will discuss an improvement on the momentum technique for stochastic gradient descent optimization. Nesterov accelerated gradient descent will take advantage of an approximation of where the parameter value will be in the cost plane on the next iteration to update the gradient accordingly. We will first take a look at the simple formula before moving on into a Python implementation. The link for all of this is uh, in the description. So let's first take a look at how Nesterov behave compared to uh, the standard momentum based optimization. The blue line is an update from the momentum and the green line is the update from Nesterov. So Nesterov is comparable um, to a ball with momentum uh, that knows when to slow down because you can see kind of the next uh, where it's going to land in the next step. Um, this uh, this figure will make more sense when we're going to look at the formula. So we're going to check out the formula and go, come back to this. So this is the formula. If you look at uh, the momentum uh, video that I did uh, a while ago, uh, you will see that it's uh, really similar except uh, what's happening in the uh, J uh, parentheses. Uh, but let's walk through it. At the bottom, we have uh, our standard gradient parameter update. So uh, this is all the new parameter after the update. This is uh, this data is the current uh, parameter value. And here we have minus the gradient uh, VT. Um, and this VT is given by the formula above. So to update VT, um, this is kind of um, a running average kind of setup. Um, I say kind of because we have the decay factor, but we don't we don't have the next part uh, on the right. Um, but here what we have is uh, VT minus one. So this is the previous gradient. Uh, so we keep that into uh, memory. Um, and this is weighted by a decay factor, which is uh, usually set to 0 0.9. So the, the difference on the this whole thing, like I said, is on the second part. Um, so here we have the learning rate, which is usually set to 0 0.1, multiplied by an approximation of, uh, uh, of the, 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 the gradient of where the ball will go in the next step. So this is how it can know um, if you need to slow down beforehand. So here we have uh, the, uh, um, the gradient of theta uh, times the cost um, at the parameter theta minus uh, the decay factor times VT minus one. Uh, so this is the approximation. Uh, so uh, the, the delta of the, the parameter at J is the gradient of the cost. So this is the partial derivative. And here the theta minus the decay factor VT minus one is the approximate uh, new parameter value. So we're using the future value. Uh, but if you look, um, it's, it's kind of uh, missing the plus N uh, part right otherwise it will be completely recursive and it will never finish um, so this is an approximation because we roughly have uh, only the, the the left part the decay factor times vt minus one without having the plus n uh, whatever so it's not really the exact value of where it could be because we need to compute this thing to know um, but it gives you a rough idea and this is how you can roughly knows where you you're gonna land so this is how Nesterov can peek ahead and correct its, its course. So if we look back at the image, the red arrow is the correction that is provided by the approximation. So the brown arrow is where we go without the approximation. And then the red is, is the little correction that is, is done by peeking ahead. right? And then it does this again and again uh, to ensure that um, the, the Nesterov uh, accelerated gradient is uh, more stable. And this is really useful for stuff like um, RNN. So let's now take a look at the Python implementation, which is available at my GitHub repo in the description. Okay, so here we are um, in the Jupyter notebook. The code is in the description. Um, and uh, it's the same setup as before because I want to show you um, uh, something that is similar a bit everywhere with the small uh, difference being the actual optimization algorithm. Um, so here, if you click on these, you will you will go into the actual video for each of them. Um, if you're watching this video, I would suggest you uh, take a look at this one um, because I will explain why how the momentum work. And if you understand the momentum, Nesterov accelerated gradient is is um, is really easy to grasp. So the setup, like always, it's a line. 
that we're trying to fit. So we're trying to get those two uh, parameter. Um, there are some, this is for uh, sanity check because this, this was made for a deep learning um, model with higher capacity, uh, but it doesn't matter because we, we can get a pretty good idea about what's happening. So here, this is a line. Uh, we can use evaluate to evaluate the line. We have the partial derivative over here. Um, some pretty simple stuff. Uh, this is used, the stochastic uh, sample is used to sample with, uh, uh, with replacement and to simulate um, uh, drawing with replacement literally. Um, this you don't need to know. This is gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent. This is the momentum one. We're not gonna go through it, but you're gonna see it's similar to the, the previous one. Um, the important part is this setup over here. So uh, what we're trying to learn is um, three things. Here we're trying to learn a line with intercept zero and slope of one. So it's given by those data points and we're really trying to overfit onto this, this data point. Um, here we're trying to learn a line with intercept zero and slope of two. So it's given by these. And similarly here it's intercept of one and slope of two. So this is just trying to scientific check to see that everything is working and you are gonna have all of these um, uh, optimization functions that are coded from scratch. Um, so this is Nesterov, this is the model that we're gonna give. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, the function. So um, that's how it looked like, let's look at the input. So the input, uh, we have the model, so this is the line uh, and the parameters are within this model. We have the x's and the y's, uh, so this is our data. We have the learning rate, which we set to this because it's a good value for this. And the decay factor, which um, a good decay factor value is 0.9. And here it's in the maximum number of iteration because we're gonna iterate as long as we want. Um, that's pretty much that. So now if we look at uh, the code, it's pretty straightforward. If we look at the formula, um, those are the gradients. So it's actually the Vs. Uh, I said G because it's a gradient. So, but uh, you can take, take think of them as, as uh, similar as, as the V. Um, so this is a V0 and V1. Um, well, sorry, V for parameter zero and V for parameter one. And then here, this is um, the, the, the iteration loop because every time we're gonna make a small step uh, toward the cost uh, in the cost plane. Um, and it's a setup is the same as every other uh, thing. You have the, um, the sampling, you have uh, the calculation of the gradient and then you have the update over here, right? So this is pretty straightforward because we're just doing like the parameter minus something. Um, and this is straightforward because we're just sampling. And this is the part that matters. And you see it's duplicated. It's only because of how I, I've set up the, uh, the parameter. Uh, I set them up as um, literally as parameter. They should have been an array. It would have been a bit easier on the, the code. Um, I can refactor that afterward. But uh, the idea is the same. So um, so this will calculate the gradient for W0 by predicting where the ball will be approximately. And remember, we do that by um, having the, um, uh, uh, calculating the cost at this parameter minus uh, the, the gradient. Right? So if we look back here, we, um, we're having the, the with this part need to be calculated with um, the parameters, let's say uh, W0 minus uh, the decay factors time, the previous uh, value for the gradient. So this is important. And the, the way this is set up, we need to, um, to, um, to actually do that and put the model as, as uh, the parameter of the model to be uh, as, uh, as, as if it was this number. And then we reset it over here. Right? It's a bit clunky, uh, but it's just because of how this thing is set up. Um, but it's as if we're calculating the cost uh, based on this um, approximative uh, value for uh, W0. So you can, you can think of it as we're saving the previous state, we're moving this state to over here, we're calculating our gradient, and we're putting this thing back into that state so that when we're gonna do uh, the model W0 minus G0, we don't. We didn't move two times. Uh, otherwise, you will never, you will never fit properly. So perfect. So this part is um, doing that part over here, right? And then the calculation of VT is this. It's a decay factor times the previous gradient. So if we look here, the decay factor times the previous gradient. 
plus the learning rate n times the um, the partial derivative of the model at this new uh, approximative uh, area uh, in the cost plane. So it's this thing. That thing is is what we're talking about. Um, and here you see they're doing it uh, and vector wise. Um, in our things, we're just doing it like uh, parameter by parameter um, because we're really trying to do it from scratch with no no uh, no NumPy library. And G1 is, a, um, the gradient one is the same thing for W1, exactly the same thing. So if we were to refactor this as uh, an array, uh, we can actually do a list comprehension and the thing will be really small. And that's it. And once you, you um, calculated G1 and G0, the, this is the goal of this, this part is to calculate what should be the new G1 and what should be the new G0. And once you got them, the, the model update is, is super simple. So let's take a look at how this thing behave. So this is the initialization and it should go to zero and one. And if you see, it's actually really, really good. After a hundred iteration, it's almost, it's already there. Uh, and then it just, it just fit um, more and more. And this is really, really close to zero. And this is literally one. Um, so Nestorov is actually really good uh, for lines. There are some of them, uh, other ones that are not that good uh, for line because they were made um, they, 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 are, they, they behave better with the, the, the starting parameter for um, higher capacity model. So this one, um, you see it's always the same thing. It's, it's getting uh, quickly to the solution. Um, yeah, and then this one too. It's like, it's like having a heavier ball uh, going through the, um, through the cost plane with a, a bit more sentience. Uh, the momentum is just like a ball that you 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 let go and it will just it will just keep on going so uh, if it, it goes to uh, the local minima it might just fly away if there was a, um, a, a steep enough um, hill just before it um, and that's it there's nothing else to it the only part that is a bit tricky to understand is this one right so um how we're, we're moving this a bit uh, in front, calculating the stuff, moving back here, and then actually taking the step of um, where we should go. Uh, once you get that and you understand momentum, um, there's nothing much to it. All right, that's it for today's video. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section. Um, and like always, have a great week.